Hello, this is Alex from Layer.ai, VP of Product, here talking through another workflows feature right here. We're going to go ahead and go through a new node. That's right. We've gone through, we've done a whole bunch of work walking through CRM titles in our last video. And now we are going to go through and make them move. We're going to operationalize your videos, dynamicize. We might even turn them into videos. We shall see. Uh, this is where we left off the last video right here. We had a composition mode, and the composition node was then saving its outputs as a two-dimensional composition. It was saving it as a square composition, a portrait, and a landscape, but we are going to move those images today. That's what we're going to do right here. Now, we had previously gone ahead and we have created these images right here in a landscape format. We have the portrait format. Of course, we have the square format as well. Whoops, the square format over here. There it is. Uh, and these three are sufficient for us to go ahead and generate static assets. But what about dynamic assets? What are we going to do right here? Well, I've created a new static asset composition node here, a single composition node that is a landscape asset. And I will explain to you uh, what we have built here. And then we're going to make a portrait version of this. And we're going to turn those into videos. But I've created a separate composition node because the composition node for the landscape over here is something that might want to be separate from the video node over here. And the video node over here, or the composition node that's going to feed into the video generator over here, is taking the CRM title and the CTA and the landscape image background and composing them into a single asset. And I'm gonna to introduce to you a new utility node, which is not present on the left node bar here, but it is present whenever you drag an image composition node into another node that requires that composition to be a single image. In this case, we're using the composition we're creating here as the first frame for a video generator. Now that requires that we can't put in the layered assets here. And yes, an image composition node is a layered asset. We are working in a future build of workflows to go ahead and showcase these assets as downloadable layered PSD files. But for right now, we are just going to work with a single version of a single uh, image of that. And then we're gonna hold off on building out the PSD export until a future time and a future release for workflows. But we are going to take this image composition and we are going to flatten those layers in the same way that we have Photoshop, for instance, flattening the layers of a layered composition that you've created. And this is because a video generator, specifically VO 3.1 at this point, cannot ingest a layered asset. They must ingest a single asset. So the single asset here uh, is just exactly that, a single PNG image that has been generated in a landscape format with all of our CRM title, our CTA, and the asset itself in the background. But in this case, it's no longer a layered asset, it's now a flattened asset. And this will be generated automatically whenever you draw a composition node and drag it into the inputs of a node that requires an image output, or sorry, an image input. And then we are generating a video. In this case, we are generating a six second long landscape video with VO 3.1. It says preserve and do not change logos or calls to action in video, the text in the video or the button at the bottom of the image. I want Santa to crawl out of the chest and throw presents in the air. What this node is doing is it is taking every image that is coming in. So we have four images coming in and it is then turning that into four distinct videos. Each one of these videos being created using VO 3.1 and each one based on a different first frame which are these four frames right here. Now a video node will always generate a video unless there's invalid data coming in. But one of the things you wanna make sure is that the image that's coming in ideally is the same aspect ratio as the video that you're generating. Otherwise you can get cropped or incorrect images out of the video generator. I'm gonna delete these here and get rid of these nodes uh, as we go through here, delete this interview node because we're gonna recreate them uh, in the next step. All right, here is interview node. Get out of here. There we go. Well, we'll leave it sit there for a little bit. 
This video generator node then generates video output here. And of course, remember that this can get relatively expensive. This video generation, six seconds, landscape 1920 by 1080, uh, four distinct videos is going to cost 108 units or about 10% of what a typical unit package you can purchase at layer will cost. Now that is still very cheap compared to video generation using other systems, but it is something to be aware of, especially if you are running a lot of images into the video generator. The video generator then generates a video for each one of these, and we can take a look at one of these videos right here. There it is, we'll play this. It's Santa! He's coming out of the, well, he walked through the wall right there, but you know, you do the best you can when you're Santa. He's magical, he's gonna walk through the wall of this, uh, of this box right here, but, we have generated that asset, and then if we go back here and we open any of these other assets, it will have a different video. Four distinct videos that are generated with Santa. And that is all you need to do to start generating videos. But that's not all you can do with videos. Let's go ahead and let's swap this out a little bit. Let's take a different generator right here. And let's say we want to create a new version of this flattened image where we are going to prompt edit it. And we are going to say, let's grab our prompt edit node, there it is. And for the prompt edit image, we are gonna say, uh, create a version of this image where it is decayed and falling apart. And then we are going to run the flatten. We can try running the image composition into it, but we are going to create a new flatten node. So there's no need to do that. That's because prompt edit requires a single image to go in there. We'll delete that flatten node and we'll just run from this existing flatten node into it. And we are gonna make a post-apocalyptic decayed and falling apart version. And you'll notice that this flatten layer is coming in as the first frames. We're gonna take this decayed version and we are going to, actually, you know what we'll do is we'll make it decayed to non-decayed. We'll delete that edge. We'll make the decayed version up here be the first frame. And then we will make the normal version the last frame. So we're going to create a video where the image, whatever image is being sent in, is decayed and falling apart. But then it will be magically turned into the final image. So let's go ahead and say... Um, transition through a uh, shimmery magical uh, let's say filter the decayed state of the image into a magical happy put together state of the last image great we'll go ahead and we're going to run that and we'll run a different one. Now, one of the things I will mention here again, because I think I believe brought it up in one of the previous videos, is that when you have data in previous steps here, you will not regenerate that data unless you have to. When you are testing a workflow out, if you're running a full workflow, then obviously all of your assets are generated. But for testing purposes, when you generate this video generator, for instance, it will only trigger the previous nodes that are required to generate its video, meaning it will trigger this prompt edit image node because it has no data within it, but this should not be triggered because the assets already exist. So we're gonna run this, we're gonna click it. We are gonna see, yep, it's gonna run prompt edit four times because there's no data left in that node and 108 units for running the video generator uh, four times there. Now we will see that the prompt edit image is running first and of course it must complete first in order for the video generator to run because it requires both inputs in order to run. And we should see, after that's complete, a decayed version of the initial CRM assets that we created here. And that decayed version will be used as the first frame for this image. And then the AI model will go ahead and translate that decayed first frame into the final frame which is the original image. And this is a little trick that we can use in some of the other uh, templates as well as workflows that we've created to start with a finished image and then decay it down. And that tends to lead to a better result. And here we go, we can see, let's download this one. There it is, it is decayed. Things are cracked. The presents have all been smashed. The wood has been rotted. 
the metal has been rusted, and even the call to action on the bottom has been made a little bit desaturated and rusted. Let's take a look at this one really quick. All right, there we are. And of course, Gemini 3 will try to preserve your image style as often as it can. So you can usually ask Gemini 3 to make changes and it will attempt to preserve the original style of your image as much as possible. I like this cracked button down here in the CTA. It even turned it sort of a sickly green. So now that we have all of our destroyed versions, this video generator is currently running and when it's complete, it will go ahead and show us our updated videos. While it's running, I wanna talk about having multiple nodes coming into the save output section. The save output node is where every output you intend to be displayed to the customer after a workflow that has been run should go in. So that means that you will be taking in this current flow, this image composition node, and this is the one that has the three different aspect ratios and the videos to be output. Because we have three aspect ratios and we have four distinct images coming in for the landscape portrait and regular square video uh, images, we'll get 12 of these image composition videos back. And with this video generator, we are generating four distinct combinations of the flatten layers and the prompt edit image layers right here, or at least we should be. This then coming in here will generate a save outputs where the save outputs will take all of the assets being generated previously here and will be returning them back to the customer. Now, if you have something over here that you want to bring over to the saved output, say for instance, you just want this base image, you would drag this base image all the way over, and we're currently running so we can't edit it, but you would take this plus and you would drag it all the way over to the save outputs node. And that would then save, in addition to all these uh, other outputs, it would save all of the other images that you've generated. Well, we actually have, this is good that, you've run, or that we've run into this, we have another quandary here. What are we seeing here? Well, what we're seeing is we are seeing 16, uh, oh no, yes, 16, videos being generated. Why were 16 videos generated? Well, the answer is because we provided four prompt edited first images and four prompt edited end images. And that meant that we had four times four videos being generated. So this is something that we'll solve in our next tutorial video. I'll showcase how to do that for right now. Let's go ahead and let's just try taking a look at one of these videos. Let's pick one that is correct and that it has the same beginning and ending image. Here we go. Let's take a look. There it is. We're going to start destroyed then decayed and then it magically poofs through and turns into a finished version. That's not bad at all. And we're going to go ahead. Let's see if we have another good one here. Some of these other ones. Let's get one where they stay the same. Let's take a look at this one. We'll download this one here. This one looks, you can see the impact of a different first uh, start and end image. It actually reconstitutes and destroys it and then pops back up. That one doesn't look bad at all. That one looks quite interesting. The magic clears everything away and then it is regenerated as a new box. That's not bad. From the ashes of failure, sometimes surprising outputs can come. So that is how you can go ahead and you can take an output from images or image composition nodes, you can turn it via flattening layers into the frames used to generate your videos and then output those videos to the final outputs of your workflow. Next one, we'll go ahead and clean that up. We'll talk about some advanced ways to go ahead and modify your videos so you're consistently generating the components of a single video that can then be varied at various times. It will be a bit more advanced video, but much more interesting to those of you who do user acquisition and want themed, varied videos in certain areas. Until then, thanks so much for watching. As always, sign up to layer.ai where you can start experiencing workflows yourself and access all of the AI tools needed to improve your pipelines for your game experiences. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Have a great day.